Welcome to Change It Up Radio. I am your host, Paula Shaw, and I'm so glad that you're here today because we've got, once again, it seems like I'm always saying we have something really important to talk about, but we do. We have something very important to talk about today because there is a national crisis here in the U.S., and I know Aren't we all a little bit tired of hearing there's another crisis? <laughs> I start to shake every time I hear the words. But the good news about the crisis we're going to talk about today is this one we can do something about. And that is why we're doing this show today, because I want all of you to know what you can do to help avert this crisis. So remember, those of you who follow the show, I am a life transitions coach. My work is all about change, and that is also the goal of this show, to help people deal more smoothly and effectively with change. Because we need it. We need it to grow. We need it to stay interested in life. But we humans do not like the discomfort of the unfamiliar. So we need a little help with change. In my private practice, I help people who are dealing mostly with unwanted change, like that which comes with death or a health crisis or sometimes a job loss or some other kind of loss. When loss comes along, whether it's a person, a place, a thing, a condition, anything that's precious to you when it's taken away produces grief and produces all sorts of emotions that come along with grief. And that's the population that I help in my private practice. And since I know all of you out there are dealing with some kind of change because change is inevitable, then we on this show want to bring you information to help make change smoother or more productive. And we also want to spotlight change makers who are trying to make the world a better place. And in that vein is my guest today, Claudine Van Gonka, and you will be meeting her very shortly. First, I also just wanted to remind you that I am the author of three books, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? Chakras, The Magnificent Seven, which is all about balancing those chakras, and this little book, my latest book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. And that book is incredibly helpful when you are dealing with people that are dealing with any kind of emotional pain, particularly loss. And the good news I've got for you today is that if you go to my website, paulashaw.com, you can get a free little ebook that is almost a cheat sheet taken from this book, saying the right thing when you don't know what to say. <clears throat> and it has, the little book is called 20 Things to Say, and not to say to people in emotional pain. Because in many, many instances, it's just as important to know what not to say as it is to know what to say. So go to paulashaw.com and pick that up as my gift to you. Also, if you want to learn more about this show or hear past shows, they're all archived on changeitupradio.com. Also, if you want to learn about being a guest or a sponsor of this show, you can get that information also at changeitupradio.com. All right, so let's get on with talking with Claudine Van Gonka, because We've got to find out what we can do about this crisis. So let me tell you just a little bit about this lady. She is the Director of Community Relations and Marketing for the San Diego Blood Bank. 
Claudine's responsible for the planning, development, and implementation of San Diego Blood Bank's marketing strategies and public relations activities. She manages media, government, and hospital relations and cultivates relationships across various sectors to raise the profile of San Diego Blood Bank. She also serves as the primary media spokesperson for the organization, and that's why we get to have her with us today. So, Claudia, please join me. Hello. Hi, Paula. Thank you so much for having me on. Really appreciate it. I'm so delighted to have you, Claudia, because probably like a lot of people listening today, I had no idea there was a national blood crisis. So can we start right there? How did this crisis evolve? What's going on? Sure. Well, much like everything else, we can blame COVID. Um, <laughs> and, and it was about, I want to say about a month or a month and a half ago or so, mm -hmm. that it was announced that our country was in the midst of a national blood crisis. And what that really means is that people were canceling their blood drives. People were not coming out to donate blood. Um, because of COVID and specifically this last time, the Omicron variant. Um, mm. and so, you know, we, we understand that people had concerns about gathering, you know, in groups and, and coming out to even a medical facility. Sure. Um, the good news is here in San Diego at the San Diego Blood Bank, we have been able to supply our hospital partners um, without any interruptions. Now, that's not to say we haven't had to work with them mm -hmm. um, to make sure and monitor their supply. But we are happy to say that right now, while supplies are still low, um, we would not consider us ourselves in the national blood crisis. However, I don't want to diminish the fact that we do need blood on a regular basis. And right now, as of today, um, I looked at the blood supply. And while we like to keep about a seven to 10 day supply on the shelves, mm -hmm. we're at about a three day supply of most so that wow. does give you some perspective and that it's very important to have blood drives to keep to keep blood drives going for people to um, maintain their appointments and to make appointments and to donate on a regular basis. Because what we like to say is it's the blood already on the shelves that saves lives. You know, we, we ask people not to wait until there's an emergency because that blood needs to be collected and processed and tested. And there's many days involved in that. So I see what we're asking is for people, you know, let's not have a crisis in the future. And the way that people can help that is to donate when they're eligible and every time they're eligible. And that's a question I want to get to in a minute. But first, let's, I would love it if you could describe how does this exactly happen? Do you set up a gym with a bunch of beds or do you have a mobile device that comes? How does this work? Sure. So there's various ways that we set up um, blood donations. So um, in San Diego, we have eight donation locations. We call them like our sites. Those are brick and mortar buildings. Um, and they're anywhere from Vista to Chula Vista. We like to say you're never more than 20 minutes away from one of our locations, no matter <laughs> are in San Diego. And people really like visiting those uh, donation locations. It's kind of like a, a regular place they go. They see the same staff. They mm -hmm. develop a rapport. So those are great opportunities um, to go to our centers. We also have 10 blood mobiles. And those are those big giant buses that you see on the road. Um, that we go to locations all the time. Um, every day we have those blood mobiles on the road. I think not including maybe Christmas Day, Easter Day, and New Year's Day. Otherwise, we have multiple blood drives every day. Um, and we do blood drives at companies, at churches, uh, with civic organizations, and schools. And mm -hmm. so it's interesting you mentioned the setup um, inside auditoriums and things like that, because we also can do that. That is a mobile drive, <clears throat> but they call that an in-room setup, meaning we take all the equipment and the beds that would be at any of our centers, mm -hmm. we take them and we set them up in gymnasiums or conference rooms or um, meeting rooms. You know, we do something uh, similar at the Comic-Con blood drive every year. We go into one of oh. their big giant ballrooms and we set up many beds and the equipment. So there's lots of different opportunities um, to participate in donating blood like that. So you mentioned the word eligibility. 
a little while ago. What or who is eligible to give blood? What are we looking for, and and who should not give blood? Yep. So, um, in order to donate with the San Diego Blood Bank, you need to be at least seventeen years of age and one hundred and fourteen pounds, and in general, good health. Mm-hmm. What, and that means basically if you have the sniffles, if you have a little cold, please wait until that passes in order to donate. Yes. yes. Who should not donate blood? Anyone who doesn't fit any of that criteria. Um, <laughs> also, pregnant women. We um, oh. will not accept for, pregnant women will be deferred, and that's for their own health and for the health of the baby. Um, there are certain people who will be deferred if they suffer from certain health conditions like hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Okay. And then there are some donors that are deferred for medication. So there's so many different ones. I probably couldn't address that all in this podcast, but we would, we would say if you are on certain medications, if you're on any medications, um, I would, I would encourage you to call before you make your appointment to donate blood. That's a great idea. So you can find out ahead of time if the medications you're on would be on that list of no, this we we can't take blood from somebody using this particular drug. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's really good to know. So in those big mobile devices that you have, how many people can be giving blood um, at one particular time? Sure. In general, most of our buses can accommodate six people. Oh, wow. Um, I'm yeah. surprised. So, I had no idea that many. Exactly. <clears throat> no, it's it's a little tighter. Pardon me. <clears throat> it's a little tighter in the buses than it is at our donor centers. But yes. we do our very best to keep everybody socially distanced outside the bus and to fill out all their paperwork outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they come into the little screening room. And they are asked a series of questions and they get their finger prick to check their iron levels. And if all is well, they're shown to one of the one of the beds. And if you're donating whole blood, which is what people generally think about when they think about a blood donation, sure. in that chair for maybe 10 minutes or so. And then oh. you go to the front of our bus, and which is what we call our canteen. And that's where you <laughs> get back the new juice. And then you're then you're out of the bus after that. So the whole process takes what? 10 minutes, I mean, a half hour? From the time you start the paperwork <clears throat> until the time you are finished in the canteen, it can take up to an hour. I okay. will tell you the paperwork is the longest part, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, but you get your little mini health screen and the actual blood donation process itself, if you are donating, again, whole blood, which is a standard blood donation, you're probably in the chair in 10 to 15 minutes at the most. My goodness, I thought it was much longer than that. That's really good to know. And let me ask you, since we are dealing with this the COVID crisis going on in addition, are you rapid testing people before they give blood these days? We are not we are no longer <clears throat> We are not a COVID-19 testing site. Okay. Um, but I will say that you are able to uh, donate. You're eligible to donate if you meet the other criteria and whether or not you're vaccinated. Oh, that's good to know. So whether or not you're vaccinated, you are eligible to donate. As long as you meet all the other eligibility requirements. Yeah. So I'm curious. If, let's just say somebody has COVID and doesn't know, Mm -hmm. in the processing of the blood that you do afterwards, will you see that in the blood? I mean, there's no way of transmitting the virus through the blood, is there? Correct. Um, COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, and Mm -hmm. respiratory viruses are not known to be transmitted through blood. Ah. We do not test for COVID-19. However, uh, we do test you know, we do have uh, specific questions when you mm-hmm. come in before you ever even get in the chair that would, would most likely preclude you from donating if you had any symptoms or if you had any COVID-related um, issues at all. But again, it's, it's not known to be transmitted through blood. So even if that happens to happen, we're not concerned that, that, would, that there would be a transmission. That is so good to know, because I'm sure a lot of people are really worried about that, both those receiving blood and those giving blood. So that could be one of the contributors to the fact that your donors haven't been showing up in the same amounts as in the past, correct? 
there are there are so many concerns and you are correct um people are just not 100 percent sure you know and so again we we invite them to visit our website san diegobloodbank.org there's a whole section for COVID questions, FAQs, and, and um, eligibility notes and things like that. Um, but you can feel safe in knowing that, again, COVID-19 is generally, it's, it's not transmitted through blood transfusions. So that's not a concern. And you absolutely cannot catch COVID-19 from donating blood. That's, that's not even a, a possibility in any way. Oh, that's so good to know. Really good to know. So, I'm sure a lot of people worry it's going to hurt. <laughs> you know, you're going to be sucking my blood out. Oh, now I know it's not like for an hour. But is it is it any more painful, Claudine, than when you get blood taken for a blood test? It really is not. And, you know, we get this question a lot. Some people say the worst part of it is just that little finger prick before you even donate to, to check your iron. Um, mm -hmm. People do feel a little pinch, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the initial insertion of the needle when they're donating blood, and other people feel nothing. My husband personally is a donor, uh, and he feels nothing. You know, I feel a little pinch here and there, but, mm -hmm. you know, once you're in the process, you feel nothing, and you, and generally you don't feel it coming out either. Um, and, and what I would say, I have a little tip, you know, if people are a little concerned, um, pro tip is drink a lot of water mm -hmm. um, for your donation in the morning of your donation. Um, hydrated veins, you know, are, are easier to find than they are. Absolutely. All right. On that note, we need to take a quick break and we will be right back with Claudine Vanganka. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio. I am your host, Paula Shaw. And I am here today with Claudine Van Gonka of the San Diego Blood Bank. And we are talking about something many of you may not even realize is going on. But here in the United States, there is a shortage of blood in blood banks all over the country. And so if you are listening to this show and you're not in San Diego, be sure to check in your local area to see when blood drives are going on because we really need everybody to have a new consciousness about the importance of donating blood. So, Claudine, welcome back. You know, in just doing that, saying what I just said in the intro, it occurs to me um, we haven't really discussed what sort of situations, probably almost always in a hospital, is blood needed? What is this shortage actually creating danger around? So when there's a national blood shortage, there is um, the possibility that a trauma center may have to close down or not be able to provide oh, wow. you know, the service needed for the person in need. So to give an example of the different needs for blood, of course, we always think of the accident victim, maybe the, the car crash victim mm -hmm. who has a one-time need for a blood transfusion because of blood loss. Um, but what people don't maybe think about is the other folks who need blood on a regular basis. We have two young ladies that we work with at the San Diego Blood Bank who receive blood every two to three weeks for a rare form of anemia that they have called beta thalassemia. And so as part of their, you know, treatment, part of their regimen, they do have to receive blood transfusions every two to three weeks, wow. and they will for the, for the rest of their lives or until, you know, there is a cure found. And so those folks are the ones that are most concerned when they hear about blood shortages because mm -hmm. they do it on a regular basis. Also, people might not be aware that platelets, which are a component of blood, are often used in chemotherapy treatment. So cancer patients often need uh, blood on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I have heard that before. So in it, one of the things that's most important is obviously donating so that we can get the amounts back up. I love the way you talked about blood on the shelf, <laughs> kind of an interesting way to put it. But, but that brings a, a question to my mind. When you have blood, how and where do you store it so it stays in good condition to be usable? We have big, giant refrigerators and freezers at the San Diego Blood Bank, and uh -huh. blood <clears throat> and whole blood 
uh, lasts 42 days on the shelf. Uh, once it's processed and tested, it lasts about 42 days in the refrigerator. Now, plasma, which is a, a, the liquid portion of the blood that helps with uh, clotting factors, that can live a year in the freezers, um, So, which is great. Now, the wow. platelets we just spoke about, they are also uh, refrigerated. However, they only have a five-day shelf life. And so we really need those platelet donors to come in. And wow. it's very interesting to watch. Uh, inside the San Diego Blood Bank, you see the, the bags of platelets. They need to be constantly agitated and they need to be kept at a certain temperature oh. because if they don't, they will coagulate and then be unusable. So there's just fascinating little tidbit about uh, platelets. Yes. And platelets. So is it certain conditions that would not need the whole blood and they would only need like the platelets? Is that what you're saying? Correct. So one whole blood donation is comprised of red blood cells plasma and platelets. So there could be a time where we take a whole blood donation and spin out those three different um, factors and uh -huh. just use the platelets like say for a chemotherapy or just use the plasma for a burn victim. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting. I didn't realize that either. So just kind of coming back full circle to the experience Again, you gave the criteria, and can you mention that again? Who's eligible to give blood? Yep. So you need to be at least 17 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no upper age limit, I failed to mention. So you could be any age as long as you're healthy and, uh, and, and able to donate. You need to be at least 114 pounds and in general good health. So if you have the sniffles or a little cough, we ask that you wait um, to donate. Perfect. and. When people come to a, a blood drive, and we are encouraging people, if you're not in San Diego, if you are in San Diego, of course, the uh, we're going to have Claudine give the information as to how you can reach out to make an appointment or to learn whether or not you're eligible. Because you did mention, Claudine, certain conditions like, was it hep C? Is that one of the ones you mentioned? Correct. Yeah. If you have Would, hepatitis B or hepatitis C, you will get deferred. Um, pregnant women, we defer for the health of the mother and mm -hmm. the baby. And again, if you're taking certain medications, and yeah. there's there's such a long list, I probably couldn't list them all here, but yeah. there are certain medications that, that may preclude you from donating blood. So you'll want to call your blood center before you make your appointment. Mm. And one other thing you mentioned earlier that I find very interesting, and, and I'm realizing how... Um, ignorant and really naive I have been about how this whole process works. So I'm so excited that we're talking today because you mentioned something about people being consistent donors. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the word you used, but could you explain a little bit about that? Sure, sure. So when you donate blood, <clears throat> if you donate whole blood, which is again what people normally think of when they want to donate blood, mm -hmm. you donate every eight weeks. Um, and so what we're asking is oh. when you're eligible again, which will be after that eight week period that you come in and donate again um, and to donate on a regular basis every time you are eligible, because then that blood is on the shelf ready and waiting for hospital. Yes. To eat it. And, and, you know, God forbid there's, there's an emergency and we need a stockpile of blood. Mm -hmm. um, so that blood will be on the shelves when needed. And we, we actually have a program at the San Diego Blood Bank to encourage people to become regular donors. And it's called the Guardians Circle Program. And if you sign a pledge to donate within eight weeks of every time you're eligible, mm -hmm. you will be included in some really fun activities, um, the raffles. You get special gifts from the San Diego Blood Bank. We do a little oh. surprise and delight uh, when you show up for a donation. There are so many benefits to that program. And, and the reason, again, that program was created was to encourage people to donate regularly. Some folks will say, oh, I'm a regular blood donor, but they only donate once a year. Yeah. Uh, try That's to educate them about what a regular donor is. Yes. So every eight weeks, you're eligible again. Correct. That's okay. Whole now, I, I might want to mention for the platelets that we talked about, mm -hmm. um, the donation of platelet process is longer than a whole blood donation. You could be in the chair for about 90 minutes. Um, okay. So the whole experience could be about two hours. However, again, those platelets only have a shelf life of five days. And so they're just ever mm -hmm. so important to donate. 
Um, and, and plasma is a very similar donation process. It can take about that long as well. So if somebody really wants to do their part, now let me ask you a quick question. It, the program you just mentioned, and tell us the name again, the ones with the consistent donors. It's called the Guardian's Circle Program. Guardian Circle. Is that sort of program all across the country or only here in San Diego? So the Guardian Circle Program is only specific to San Diego Blood Bank. However, blood centers across the country all have different versions of a loyalty oh. program. Oh, so very cool. You definitely want to look into that. If you ever decide you want to donate blood, you know, you might as well go ahead and, and get some extra rewards for doing that. And there is no danger for the donor, correct? I mean, you're not going to like be weak for days or anything like that. Is that oh, correct? No, no. No, no, no. And, and everyone's different. But what we what we do encourage people is to not do any strenuous activity or working out for 24 hours after your donation. You just don't want to, you know, make your body go through too much. But in general, people feel very good after blood donation. It's almost like we joke around internally that it's like a loop oil and filter. You know, you're regenerating <laughs> your blood cells and people generally feel very good after a blood donation. And do you recommend that they don't eat or drink before it or that they do? We definitely encourage donors to have a good, healthy meal before they donate. Okay. And I can't stress enough the hydration, um, especially the night before and the day of your donation. Drink a lot of water and that will make everything go all the easier. Oh, that's so good to know. So before I have you give the contact information and where people can get more information or make an appointment to donate, which is what we really hope will happen, is there any last bit of information or any other fears that have come up that you see people having kind of more commonly that you want to address, Claudine? Yeah. Um, I, many times we get questions about tattoos and piercing. Oh. And it used to be <clears throat> that you were not able to donate, you know, if you had a tattoo for some amount of time. But I will reiterate that if you've had a piercing or a tattoo, as long as it has been done in a state regulated facility, you can donate blood the very next day if you feel able wow. to. Wow. And, uh, and also, I'd like to add just a little asterisk that one blood donation could save up to three lives. To go back to our conversation about how one, one blood donation has um, consists of red blood cells, platelets, and plasma, mm -hmm. those three components could go into three different people just with one blood donation. So I just want to keep that in mind. You're saving wow. potentially multiple lives with, with one hour of your time. That is so important. I think that's the most <laughs> important point that we've made. I think we forget that that blood actually could make the difference between life and death for a person who really needs it, can't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Life and death, or in some instances, quality of life as mm. well. Oh, yeah. So we have coming up on March 25th, um, you, San Diego Blood Bank, and Terra Pro Solutions, and the Better Business Bureau are hosting a mobile blood drive. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about that and how people can make their appointments? Sure. So as you mentioned, it's on Friday, March 25th. The Terra Pro Solutions and the Better Business Bureau serving the Southwest are hosting a blood mobile, um, a blood drive with the San Diego Blood Bank. Mm -hmm. um, the drive is going to be held from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the Better Business Bureau, 4747 View Ridge Avenue in San Diego. Um, and we, we encourage appointments just so that we can be best prepared. However, if you're not sure if you can make it, walk-ins are welcome. And at this particular drive, we're going to be giving away some special t-shirts. So there'll be little incentives for everyone to stop by. And ah. we just really want to thank Terra Pro Solutions and the Better Business Bureau for hosting this drive, you know, at a time that's so important for our community. Oh, yes. And what is the phone number people can call to make appointments? You can call 619-400-8251, or I encourage you, the easiest way is to go to sandiegobloodbank.org, and there you can not only make your appointment, but you can learn a little bit more about the types of donations and that Guardian Circle program and, and other ways that you can support the San Diego Blood Bank if you are unable to be a blood donor. 
Oh, I love that. One more time, can you give that web address? SanDiegoBloodBank.org. Perfect. And and the phone number, I, I guess if they go on that website, the phone number is there if they need to call at some point for some reason, correct? Sure, sure. but again, it's 1-9-400-8251. Thank you so much, Claudine, for this very, very eye-opening interview. Uh, I got to tell you, I have learned a whole lot, and I am going to be much more conscientious about donating blood in the future. And I hope that all of our listeners will also feel the same way because it is something so important that we can do. We get to actually sit down and relax while we're doing it, and we all could use more of that. And in doing that, we're, we may just be giving the gift of life. So thank you to you, thank you to TerraPro, thank you to the Better Business Bureau, and to all of you putting on this particular drive. But remember, everybody, as Claudine said, they are out there every day. So check the website, find out where there's a blood drive in your area. And this goes for all of you across the U.S. Oh, and by the way, Claudine, we had a number that we could give people who are in other states to check on blood drives in their area, correct? Sure. Actually, there's um, a website. Uh, the organization is called America's Blood Centers. So it's mm -hmm. americasblood.org is a website where you can go and no matter where you are um, across the United States, you can find a blood center near you. And will you give that uh, address one more time? Sure. It's americasblood.org. Perfect. And all of these addresses and phone numbers will be in the show notes. So if you're somebody who's driving or walking and you weren't able to write any of this down, it will all be on changeitupradio.com and in the show notes of, as you know, we're on every podcast platform, including iHeartRadio and Blog Talk Radio. So thank you to all my listeners. Thank you so much, Claudine, for the work that you're doing and for sharing all of this very valuable information with us. It was thank really you. a pleasure. We really, really appreciate this opportunity. Get out there and donate blood, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week with another great show on Change It Up Radio. Bye-bye.